What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. This week we are back on the Godzilla Swap Continental. UPS just dropped off something very special. So we just got in our new transmission for the Continental from Bowler Performance. So in order for us to get this transmission in, we're gonna need to do some cutting and some modifying to our floor pan. So as you see, the floor pan and the transmission tunnel is very tiny and we have a big motor and we have a big transmission. So our first step here this morning is Dave's gonna get some preliminary measurements on how high our bell housing is and how high our whole transmission is. So he's gonna go over and start cutting up our floor pan in the Continental. We're gonna get the Continental on the lift, get it off the chassis table, and we're gonna stick this big slug in there. So. That's the task for today. Dave's ready. You can I'm just ready. tell. He's very excited. Right, look, I got this. He's got a tape measure, so we're good to go. All right. I got my preliminary cut line here. As you can see, it's marked. It's gonna be cutting on the inside of the tape. It's all just taken from rough measurements off of the transmission. Could be a, a little bit more that needs to be cut once we actually get up in here, but this is a good starting point. You don't want to cut too much. So I'm going to start, cut this whole section out, see what it looks like after that. All right, so our initial cut gave us a good idea of where we need to be but there's a couple impedances to us getting this all the way tucked up. One is these two pieces that stick out wider than the body. And then also these cooler lines are gonna need space on this side. And on this side, the shift selector mechanism sticks out as well and comes up. I wasn't sure how high it was gonna to have to sit in there. So I marked it out, some tape and it was up there. And pretty much we're just gonna make a cut from this corner down to the screen tape. This is a flat floor and then it transitions up. Same on this side. This is where the cooler lines are. So pretty much we're just gonna cut out the vertical section of the tunnel down to where it becomes horizontal on either side. Get rid of this right here, this right here, and then we'll have a much better chance of fitting in. got that sorted out we got our transmission mount so bolts right up there gives us a nice rubber isolator so the plan for this is to utilize these factory holes and there's two on this side too like it was meant to be so I'm gonna attach this here and we're going to be building kind of like a C channel claw to capture that and uh, half-inch hardware could pass through on either side of the frame, encapsulate it, and then we will be using some sort of round bar with another flat to catch the, the bottom right here. So we're gonna start designing, making these pieces up first, get them in there, and then mount this up. All right, we got our first bracket done. So I got two half inch pieces of hardware. We got a bend, obviously that's gonna be welded in, and then over here, I just got a sample piece of pipe, and I made this tab down here. So this will be welded on there, and then there's gonna be a catch plate coming off the top that's gonna catch the two bolts into our transmission rubber isolator mount. So, so far this looks pretty good. It's not only wrapped around, but it's also, they're sleeved internally as well. So this is gonna be a very strong mount. We just need to cut another one, clean it, build it, bend it, and then we'll be on our way to measuring exactly how long of bar we need between these two pieces. All right guys, while Dave is hard at work fabricating, I want to take a second and talk about this week's sponsor, Connect Team. Connect Team is a dream come true to small custom shops like ours, where the action happens on the front line and not behind the desk. From managing the crew, 
to organizing schedules, assigning jobs and tasks, even handling payroll, Connect Team brings everything together right in the palm of your hand. It's completely customizable to my shop, my projects, and even my individual tasks. It's a huge time saver, which means more time working on these awesome rides. Now I do prefer wrenching and fabricating over computers and phone apps, but Connect Team is designed with simplicity in mind. No complicated setup, no tech headaches, just easy, straightforward shop management. Now let's talk about the value for money, because as a small business, every dollar counts. With Connect Team, you get an incredible range of features at the price that won't dent your wallet. They even have a free plan for small shops like ours that can handle up to 10 users. Now grab yourself the power of an all-in-one employee app that is designed with mobile in mind. Check out that link in the description and start spending your time where it matters most. Okay, so we got both of our brackets all welded up and I have them mounted in place here and here. And now we could get our accurate measurement for how long our connecting piece of round stock will be. Right there. I'm gonna cut length of tube, 18 and 8. Make sure it fits up here. Mark exactly the up, down, left, right level it needs to be welded. We got our bracket off. It's all tacked up in place. I'm gonna do a whole bunch more tacks, move around, make sure it doesn't move it. Do some final welding. And then also after this piece is all set in, I'm going to do a couple gussets from the bar to our catch plate that catches the bottom of the transmission now. So we are all finished up with this transmission mount. Got this nice stout 1.75 inch OD bar in between, encapsulating through sleeved holes through the frame to pieces of half inch hardware on either side. And then that's lined up to our rubber transmission mount up to the actual transmission. So this guy's loose, it's out of here, it is sturdy in there. So that pretty much finishes up this section for now. Now the transmission's in place, we could keep moving. Okay, so now that we got our transmission all set with our brace, the next step is that we're gonna have to make a run for the drive shaft coming off here, running down and meeting up with our rear end. So as you can see, we ended the cut here just for the transmission, but as soon as this drive shaft comes out, it's gonna get knocked straight into more of the tunnel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna lift the car up, take note of how far back I need to cut whether this needs to be at an angle, maybe take something else that could represent a drive shaft and hold it up there so I could kind of get a feel. And then once this is all cut out and prepped, then we could start thinking about making a transmission tunnel to cover our whole area here. So we got our initial cut made here. As you can see, now we have lots of space starting here, running all the way back Oop, to the rear, rear end. But we don't still don't know where this is gonna sit exactly. Right now we're hanging, which will never be the position. We'll have the weight of the car on it, on the airbags. Obviously the airbags are adjustable, so we're gonna have a slam position where they're aired out and then a ride height position. And in order to figure this out, we sort of need to know where our wheel is gonna be. So Andrew over there tells me 
that there's a 28 and a half overall diameter of the wheel and tire package that we're going with for this car. So I'm going to find a large piece of cardboard, cut out 28 and a half inch circle and put some holes in it, slide over the hub. And then we can use our screw jack here underneath the rear end and start to bump it up until that wheel slams into the fender. And that will tell us our slammed ride height. Once we have that, then we'll be able to assess exactly where the drive shaft is gonna go and how high the pinion comes out on the rear end. And then that will tell us if we're gonna clear this bar right here, which is part of our suspension kit. So this will tell us a lot, a number of things, but we can't know any of them until we make a fake wheel, get the screw jack, compress this, and see exactly how it looks. First off, we adjusted our lower link arms. We, we adjusted them out and that made the face of our rear end more perpendicular to the ground, which brought our drive shaft angle down. Then we raised up into the slam position and we have our mock tire package, which is a little bit off in diameter, so we actually have more space than this. But this is in a really slammed position. As you can see, coming here to here, we're gonna figure out right now using the string what our most slam position can be and then see how that relates to running through our new opening in our dry shaft tunnel. So we have this in our slammed position. We put up a drive shaft and tested it with this clearance and the clearance of our suspension cross member. And we still have a gap in this position, which is great. We had marked center here. This is where the pinion is going to leave the rear end. So that's where we were able to hold the drive shaft up to. It would come through here, run down the tunnel. So I think we're all good. I need to cut out this little section a little more just to make sure that there's enough left to right room for the drive shaft as it comes down. And then that should be a good starting point where we could start thinking about design for the tunnel. You could also sort of see with our mock-up, this is a little bit big, but our relative height of the bottom of the tire to the relative height of the frame. And they're, I don't know, what, three, three inches? Three and a half, four it's inches? Like four inches four inches in the slammed position. Like I said, we have a little bit more to go up and this was cut a little bit big in size. So it's gonna be pretty slammed looking. Yeah, so hopefully we have what, maybe three, about three inches from the pinch weld to the floor. Right. Just enough to maybe stick your toe under. Yeah. So hopefully we can get it as low as you typically see them. I wasn't 100% sure if we can get it that low because of the cross member and the engine that we're using because it's so tall and we're right. just trying to get it under the hood. We were always knew that it wasn't going to be the lowest Lincoln that you see out there, but mm. it's definitely going to be slammed. It's going to be low. We're making it happen and everything seems to be working out and working together. Yeah. Let's keep it moving. Okay, so we got our tunnel all prepped up. So as you can see here, I set up a string, put it here at the edge. That'll be our highest point in the back. And then I used a block of wood as a spacer to get our front mark. And now the string can represent the highest point on our tunnel. I centered it with the rear end and centered it with our tail of our transmission. So. This kind of gives a good idea. You can kind of visualize the shape around that string, what our tunnel is going to look like, and you can start to see all of the obstacles. So we have this weird sort of kick down here, and we got another sort of kick up spot right here. So nothing's going to be extremely straightforward with this. We're going to have to go piece by piece. So our slip roller is only two feet wide, and we want to use also some not just sheet metal, but some thicker gauge to give some support back into this unibody. So that being said, we got to sort of start at the beginning of the tunnel, make our first piece, see how far back that will actually come on the transmission, and then work our way back in, in pieces from there.
Okay, so I got my first two pieces in here, and this big one is tacked to the firewall, and a couple little tacks on the side just to hold it in its relative position. There's gonna be, have to be some filler piece adjustment on the side here. There's a big gap, and also I wanna make sure that there's enough room for our gas pedal next to our brake pedal. But I'm gonna pretty much be building the whole tunnel before getting to the little stuff at the end. So I got this first piece rolled over, did a little bend on the edge, and then I made this second piece, bringing it out to right before where there's another transition in the body line. Next up, I'm gonna redo our string line. So our string line, once again, it's gonna come off of here, and then I'm gonna put it onto the top of the tail, and that will give us the height that the tunnel needs to be coming from the front to the back. And that's important because we don't want that drive shaft hidden into our tunnel. So we'll get our string reattached and then keep making templates. All right, we got our tunnel roughed in here. It's just tacked together. The only spot it's really connected to the car is up front. And that's because we're gonna end up probably removing it. But before we do that, there has to be one modification made. And that is up front here. So we got a brake pedal, we got a tunnel, and we got a tiny little sliver of space for a gas pedal. So we're gonna need to flatten the side of the tunnel just on this section. That way we can make room for our gas tank. So down here, we don't really have any room to come in because of where the linkage is on the transmission, but we have a ton of room right up here where the gas pedal needs to be. So I'm gonna draw some lines, make some cut marks, and then take out a section, and then be able to make a template, cut it out, and section it in so we'll have a nice flat spot which will give us a lot more room for our pedal. Okay, we got our transmission tunnel and drive shaft tunnel back in the car. It looks really nice. It's fitting up really well. Before we do a final install though, we have a ton of other fab work. We have a gas tank, a drive shaft, and a wheel package to put in this thing. And then after all that is done, we could go back to this interior, start planning out all of our finishing work, seeing what it's gonna look like. So stay tuned, like, and subscribe so you don't miss out on all the future stuff that's happening to the 65 Lincoln. Peace.